Okay, here we go. Video number 10 of building the body on the Studebaker. Right away, we're going to get into it. We're working on the seat and the headlight buckets. So my plan here is to cover this foam. I can take these out of here. Cover them with this six ounce cloth and then use this West Systems epoxy. Uh, this resin doesn't smell like uh, your regular uh, fiberglass resin and it doesn't eat the white foam either. That's the main reason for using it. Plus these pumps are nice. One pump of each, this is being the hardener, is the correct ratio. Stir it up for two to three minutes and you can start to apply. And it's the slow version, extra slow. Uh, which is about, I guess, 30 or 45 minutes, so it's plenty of working time. Okay, I mixed up a small batch. And uh, with my paintbrush, I'm going to wet down the foam. I have some pieces of fiberglass. I'll uh, lay across it. Probably end up with at least two layers of glass cloth. We'll see how far the epoxy goes here. Okay, so now I have the whole thing covered with resin and I'm going to lay the cloth on and wet it down. Put it on there and saturate it and it'll take the shape. Yeah, it's laying down pretty good. I'll just keep working it around. Okay, I have basically one layer of fiberglass and, and I've saturated it good with the resin. Um, it takes 24 hours to dry to where you can sand it. I'll probably put at least one more layer of glass and a couple more layers of resin. I'm trying to build it up so I can get a good sandable surface to, to accept paint. Working on number two now. Okay, both headlight buckets are covered in their first coat and all I can do now is wait till tomorrow night and then I'll give them a sanding and add some more resin and, and glass. It's been 24 hours. These are solidly dry now. So my plan is to sand on them a while, smooth them out, and then apply another coat of glass and epoxy. So with the palm sander, and this is 120 grit, I'm out of 80 grit or I'd be using 80. I've been working on this and it's starting to smooth out. I had some pretty good sized drips and a couple of void areas. I, I don't do this fiberglassing very often, so it, you know, it was a little troublesome, but I can sand it smooth and apply new layers of glass and epoxy and uh, it'll turn out fine in the end. Right now I just need to keep sanding. While I'm waiting for the epoxy to dry, I'm going to turn my attention to the seat. What I need this seat to do is to be more upright like this. With this slanted back, when I put it in the car it moves the seat forward and my feet are too close to the pedals and my knees hit the dash. So you can see this this line needs to be vertical. So uh, I'll take it apart and figure out how to cut it down. If you recall I made this seat back when I built the running chassis long before the body and uh, I made a slight miscalculation 
because the back is slanted, it pushes the seat forward and then the pedals are too close. I didn't take into account this back wall, um, which wasn't a problem when it was just an open chassis. I want to use it, so my plan is to cut it so that it's upright, straight up and down. Cut that bottom part off and then make a new seat bottom. Using the jigsaw and the side grinder, I trimmed this to where it stands up now. So I want to mate this to the uh, foam pad and plywood blank that I have in the car. That piece of foam is on a three-quarter inch piece of plywood and it's notched to avoid the brake line down there. And so what I want to do next is figure out how to join these two together. I think that'll look all right. Then I'll have my upholstery buddy cover that with some, some vinyl that I pick out. So this is the bottom of the seat. There's where it's notched for the brake line. The whole idea of this, this plywood here is so that the fabric can wrap around and staple along here. And then these are one inch thick, so that's a three inch foam pad. And then, uh, let's set this up on here. So I need to shape this to fit this contour and then figure out a method of attachment. Here I've centered it up over the foam and uh, made a mark. I'm going to use the bandsaw to cut that. I can cut through the plywood and the foam all at the same time. screws I gotta take out. Okay. Okay, so far so good. Not quite as elegant as the first version, but it'll be functional. Let's see how it looks in the car. Well, I guess it looks all right. It's a little bit lower than I had envisioned. I see it more up here. Um, I'll come up with something to raise that up. But generally speaking, you get the idea. I think later I can flare these out a little bit more just here at the top. Yeah. I temporarily raised the seat up to that height and uh, I'm going to climb inside and see how it feels. Well, it's hitting me right here. So this could stand to go down maybe that much further and then these two splay those out and then I think it'd be just fine. Yep, a little bit lower. I think I'll just attach it right to the body. Alright. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll drop it down a few inches and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attach it into the side of the body here 
and here with some flush bolts and then this seat will be independent of it um, yeah and then I'll splay these out considerably and I might even drill some holes in here just for looks alright this shouldn't be too tough okay I'm making progress I trimmed it here and over here and then I made a notch for this bolt that comes through and I think that's the height I'm gonna go with so I need to shape this just a little bit so it'll lay flat and get around this uh, throttle cable here and then I can attach it okay I think I'm about ready to install this I made a little notch here uh, then I drilled the holes for the screws that go into the chassis uh, and uh, I'm going to put a row of screws these are like a number eight sheet metal screw they'll be flush down the center here I'm gonna get those installed first and that'll hold everything while I do the side screws almost there I have these four screws installed I have to do the two there and two over there you get an idea how the seat's going to work pretty good I'll probably screw that down from underneath once it's upholstered alright I'm happy with that I'm happy to report that the seat back is solidly installed and once I get the seat covered then I'll attach it okay let's move on to something else okay I have them sanded down for the first time and I have all the things I need to apply more glass and another layer of resin so I finished the second coat and it went on way better I, I struggled with the first coat of uh, glass and resin but this one went on a lot better and I used smaller pieces maybe two inches square uh, and it laid down much better so I'll let it dry 24 hours and I'll sand it again and at some point I'll just apply more resin when I'm happy that it's that I have a good layer of fiberglass okay we'll see how they look tomorrow okay I finished with the second sanding and uh, they turned out great uh, I'm gonna put another layer of fiberglass on it uh, because this one went really well then I'll sand that down and after that it'll just be layers of epoxy till I have it built up enough so I can sand it super smooth I thought I would try to come up with what would appear to be a tailgate um, it'd be non-functioning I just wanted to make it look like there's something there I thought maybe I'd do a rolled edge I would plant on aluminum panel I try to create some kind of seam to make it look like there's a tailgate let's see what I can come up with I'm making progress here making some patterns this will be uh, 40,000 same thickness as this corner trim here and I'll leave an eighth inch gap I'll make a panel rolled edge I'll remove this piece and then thinking is later when I paint it I can paint that reveal black or gray dark gray something to make it look like there's a gap alright got a few panels I have to make here I took the paper patterns traced them onto poster board and then use that to trace it onto the 40,000th aluminum now as I usually do I'll cut right through the line from the sharpie and then hand file it and test fit them the width of 
the Sharpie line, and that leaves just a hair to be filed by hand. Okay, so now I'm going to go around the edge and just file off a little bit. Just smooth it out. Okay, that piece is ready to go. Okay, this is coming together. I have the two side pieces and the bottom pieces taped in place. It's a subtle thing. Um, and with the painted reveal, that'll help bring it out. Uh, one other thing I'm trying to accomplish is right through the middle here, I want a smooth area where I'll have a Studebaker decal. Uh, which I think will look nice. So some of those rivets will get moved to a more obscure location. Okay, continuing on. Here you can see the first trial fitting of this tailgate piece. I'm uh, hand forming this over a pipe that I have out in the vise. A little bit more work and it'll be where I want it to be. It's got to lay down more back here. But it's coming along. It might be alright. I have this steel rod in the vise. And this stays against the table. And then I just get down on my knees and I pull down on this thing. And it's only 40,000, so I'm able to get it to shape without any hammer marks. So I gotta push on it just a little bit more, and then a little bit of trimming to make it sure it fits right. All right. It's interesting that I really didn't have everything figured out on this tailgate when I started working on it. And now that I'm at this point, I've decided I'm gonna remove this top strip Get this out of here. I'm going to drill out these rivets. I'm going to cut it here and here. I'm going to leave a little bit of it on the ends, but I'm going to take out this middle. That will allow this panel to fit down much better over this. Yeah. That's going to look just fine. All right, they're drilled out. And I'm going to cut it right there on the red line. And that, that will touch the tailgate portion, so there won't, won't be any gaposis. I had to take off the rails, but that was easy. Okay. Okay, I think I have this fitting the way I want. I trimmed back the corners right here so that that will lay in nice. I also hammer formed this over the steel rod out there. And we got it to fit really nice. See I trimmed it back right here. So I need to trim the length. I might hem that over make it look like a hinge line. Uh, but uh, I'm happy with the way the top turned out. The top roll. Okay. Here I'm uh, hammering the bottom edge over a 
piece of aluminum welding rod creating the look of a hinge and it seems to be going all right I'm pretty close to having this one done uh, you can see where I've hammered it over and I'm starting to finesse it here using a hammer and a punch trying to clean it up and it's with a little bit of work I can get that to look smooth and decent right now it's pretty rough but that'll emulate a hinge line and uh, I'll put just a few rivets in it to hold it in place because I want to keep it open for the Studebaker decal all right almost done with this one okay I finished the tailgate I'm happy with it fits real nice Yeah, that turned out better than I expected. And I have ample room right here for a Studebaker decal. A little reveal. And the hinge line cleaned up. Alright, job done. Studebaker. I found this image online. It was um, designed by Raymond Lowry. This particular Studebaker logo was designed for print advertising. And I thought, well, that'd look good on the back of a pickup tailgate. Uh, I'll uh, have these made, this sticker made out of peel and stick decals. All right. Okay, it's time to turn my attention towards the windshield. Um, I'm going to uh, move in the direction of the model here where it's slightly curved and there are two brackets on the side. So I'm trying to determine the size of it and the slant. So this is my starting point. I've also been cutting up some uh, poster board here uh, here's my first version of a bracket. Let's see how those look. Here I've taped on the brackets. They're identical. They're a right and a left though. And uh, these will be made out of uh, 40 or 50 thousandths aluminum. And it's really a simple shape with just some simple bends. It'll rivet through here and then these will be small screws going through the plexiglass. I could put a little shape to this and uh, I want to fill in down here more like the model right there. This is the direction I'm going to move with this. I'll make the two brackets first then fit the plexiglass to it. I'm happy with the size of it and the angle. I could uh, curve this a little. Um, but yeah, I think I'll uh, I think I'll run with this for now. I thought I'd do one more version before I committed to making the brackets. And uh, in this one I shape this a little more thickness right there and then I moved it back a little bit see how it overhangs the dash okay I think I'm gonna commit to making the brackets now here I have a piece of sixty thousandths I'm gonna use to uh, make the windshield brackets it didn't take long to uh, rough these out I, I have a right and a left and I've made my marks and uh, I have them orientated so that I can bend them correctly. So off to the finger break. Okay, I'm ready for my first bend. Okay. That looks pretty good. All right. 
I like it. I'm uh, using my machinist vise to make the other bend because the jaws are nice and smooth unlike the uh, regular vise where it would mar up the finish. So I just have to bend it over. Let me tap that. like it. Okay, so this one have to bend this way. Okay. One right hand, one left hand. Okay, so far so good. Uh, right now I'm just bending the bottom tabs to try to get the get at the angle right, get them to stand up the way I want. And uh, then I can work the pattern to get the plexiglass to fit. Here I've temporarily installed it with some sheet metal screws. And it's fairly stout. I think it'll be alright. Okay. I have both brackets installed now and I've made my pattern and I have a piece of 8 inch Lexan plexiglass. Got it over at Home Depot and uh, I've used this on the BMW and the Monocar. Alright, so it shouldn't be too tough to cut this. Here I've cut the plexiglass to shape and uh, it's under quite a bit of tension when I put it between the brackets. It really needs to be curved a little bit and I have an idea of how I'm going to try to do that. Okay, I have this cheap heat gun here from Harbor Freight, $15. And I'm going to try to heat up the, the plastic and let it drape over this piece of aluminum here and put a little curve to it. So let's see if it works. Well, that ended up being a bust. I just couldn't keep enough heat on it. I could put it in the oven uh, and let gravity do its thing, but I'm gonna go to plan B. Okay, so this is plan B. It's just a simple straight windshield. I've got it fitting pretty good. I need to drill holes and round up some small screws. I also need to uh, take some time and sand and file these. There's a few hammer marks. Get them looking pretty good. And then I can do the final installation. All right, it's a beautiful Saturday morning. Nice and warm out. So I'm back to working on this windshield. I'm attaching it now. I went and picked up some acorn nuts. Some little 632 screws. Let's see how this works. All right, I get to call this windshield done. I think the acorn nuts turned out real nice. And there's a little bit of flexibility to this, but it's nice and stout. That Lexan is very forgiving. All right. It's interesting, little by little, it's starting to take on a personality. I'm liking the look. That windshield adds a lot. 
it's hard to get the full picture sitting up on the jack stands, but uh, definitely it's starting to come together. Okay, well, I'm well past the 30 minute mark, so we're going to call it the end of video number 10. I got to clean up the garage and move on to the next item. We did pretty good on the list. Still have a few things to go, uh, but that's okay. I enjoy this part of the build. Okay. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.